I'm going to be sharing some of my spoken word poetry, if you will stick around to hear it. Um, the first piece is called Beats Like Bones on a Drum. There'll be three pieces that I will be sharing, uh, not more than 10 minutes. They say you're not ready to listen until you're willing to lose it all, to change. But when music hits you, you feel no shame and let go of blame. Because we listen to be moved, to be made, to feel an emotion captured and spun, and then come undone. Listen, and we will access higher realms of self, because our natural instinct is to relate, to understand, to nod our heads and clap our hands when one articulates a stance on reality with panache, yet casually with a splash of novelty as words clash musically. This is the art of an MC who will lead you to higher vibes, a hostess with a mostess, a man with a plan. Damn, I wish I rocked it like she can. The words tumble out, no fumble foul, unencumbered now, we paint by letter. Better than anything they could have taught, not sold or bought, but shared for free, for you, for me, the half man, half machine, mic MC singularity, with a hip hop heartbeat, repping the rhythm of the streets, drummed up, drummed up, music scouts out in the urban jungles. Stomping ground of white cats and black dogs, tribes confused by the head lies of news and schools which bleed Teach history and preach victory, but we are no one's fools. Listen, because the music is a tool and the rhythm is calling. Drums pound out a warning. They're telling us something. Listen, in the beginning, there was a word, and the word was iqra, was um, was fertile, was soul, feminine sound which mothered the universe. There's something undeniable about passion on fire, a person animated by their words, the MC personality. It takes confidence in your capabilities and content to hold an audience for a moment in time and deliver them to the divine, like modern shamans of the civilized samsara. Listen, the heart is a solid organ which beats like bones on a drum and breaks like rocks crushed. Cause even mountains crumble and lush green is consumed by flames which fume from rage and sooner or later the sinkholes in our souls force us all to surrender. Listen, let me take you on a trip down the winding roads of everywhere and into the inner, infinite expanses. We are all eternal wanderers questing for home. We are here, and if we are limited to share what we can feel by what we can describe in language, then let our words be specific, yet languid. Let them do their duty and do it rightly. Noble words which carry meaning cross seas and borders and into the hearts of men, fiending for an end. The MC speaks, commanding and lyrical. Her commentary satirical, sharp, and on point, emotionalizing verse through her gesture and voice, the mic a weapon, intellect ammunition, fighting ignorance in rhythm, leading the masses through a different sermon, street ritual, subliminal, and we access higher realms of self because our natural instinct is to relate, to understand, to nod our heads and clap our hands when one articulates a stance on reality with panache, yet casually with a splash of novelty as words clash musically. And when the music hits you, you feel no pain. You don't feel the same, because we listen to be moved, to be made to feel an emotion captured and spun, and then come undone. The heart is a solid organ which beats like bones on a drum and breaks like rocks crushed because even mountains crumble. Listen, listen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the next piece I'd like to share is called The Way We Are Wound, and it's about the industrialization of beauty. And earlier in the panel, we talked about, you know, um, work by women that feature women's voices, not just the, the feminine image, but the inner landscape. So I hope this offers a glimpse of that. A sound takes me back to a memory, a wind up, and then a melody, 
As I watch a mechanical ballerina spin, silver box top reflecting jewels and trinkets within. And this is where the tragedy of comparison begins. Tall and slender, perched on a pedestal, sad but proud. As a young girl, I mirrored her as she spun around, perfect, surrounded by ornaments of beauty valued for their scarcity. See, those stones are treasured because they're rare and unique. But in the features of a woman, are those the same qualities we seek? Or in the pursuit of self-materialization, do we sell our souls for empty idolization? On billboards, the gold standard is swapped for the golden ratio. Fit the mold and appreciation will follow. And this is the way we are wound. Beauty is not found, it is manufactured. Ah, sweet femininity. Ah, days of simplicity basking in the warm sun, soaking up the adoration of my mom. What will I become? Anything's possible when you're young. Imagining different roles as we'd play dress up, I'd often slip into a certain pair of my mother's shoes, ones with bright sequins in the shape of exotic fruits, waiting for the day that I would measure up, always in such a hurry to grow up. Innocence fading, finger painting, quickly replaced by makeup, shading my features, slowly jaded as time passed. I watched my shadow cast beneath me, angry at the sun now for being so unflattering. I wanted long nails and a bust. A small waist was a must because the standard of beauty was predetermined in my 17 magazine, automated by the machine, carbon copy, beauty queen, mannequins, pumped out on industrial work lines. Silicon fillers and Botox pumped in to plump up laugh lines. And every goddess started to look the same, furthering the notion that we must tame our individual identities and conform to someone else's idea of normal. Barbie, plastic, nameless, static, confused and uncomfortable in my own skin. All I wanted was to spin ballerina thin to fit in to age with dignity and grace, not replace the parts of me that reveal my age. So instead, I learned to embrace them, and the tragedy of comparison ended there. As a young woman, I grew to love my body for its wabi-sabi, as the Japanese call it, perfect imperfections. And I see myself spinning for a little girl who won't ever receive a jewelry box from me. I will be the only jewel she sees because I want her to be free to create her own identity. And reflecting that beauty starts with me. Thank you. Thank you. Dana, thank you so much. My pleasure. We thank are you. so, so captivated. Thank I think we much. would like an encore. Sure. Huh? I have one more piece to one share. One more. Yes, great. With pleasure. <laughs> so the artists in the room, the curators, the gallerists, everyone, I'm sure you have come to a moment in your life where you have to make a decision and uh, it's a risky decision. I'm here to encourage you to take those risky decisions. This is a quick little piece called Risk. If you don't risk anything, you risk more. Because then, what has your life been for? No risk, no pain, no love, no gain. Each day, just more of the same. As the sun set and the moons wane, will you build a legacy in your name? Because your skin was made to scab, meant to heal. You were built to try, meant to feel. Explore the worlds within and without. Make bold choices, banish doubt. You see, the risk itself is the reward. Put it all on the line, feel open with no guards. Scale a mountain on your own. Courage is a love affair with the unknown. And when you find your way back home and safely, you'll understand what it means to be free, the freedom to give it all, to lose the certainty. Well, that is the gift of being me. Because if you never try, then you'll never grow. You'll never have scars to show. You'll never know how far you'd go with all the skills you've come to know. 
because to risk stability for a life of creation is a divine act, God's manifestation. It's easy to take. Society is built on consumption, but they who have the guts to make, they actually serve a function to all of humanity. They transcend identity and reflect the human experience so that others can connect with what they see. Art helps us feel understood by our community so that we can feel love and empathy, and we risk comfort to create and share as passionate, powerful human beings. Because your skin was made to scab, meant to heal. You were built to try, meant to feel. If you don't risk anything, you risk more. Because then, what has your life been for? What's your life for? Thank you very much. <laughs>